How free is freedom of speech? This is the question at the crux of the problem today. Harvard University, Stanford University, UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, which has a Wharton School of Management, all these are now grappling with this. How far do they allow their students or members of their faculty in their personal capacity to protest? And what is right and what is wrong? So all these things are now coming to the fore. And I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about what has been happening in Harvard, because this was the first one out the gate with some really interesting um, <coughs> outbreaks against uh, uh, Semitism, against Israel, the existence of Israel, Jews, and so on. So I wanted to kind of give you guys an update on what has happened in the last 10, 15 days, because this is just not stopping. And clearly, now what is happening is the Jewish students, the Israeli students, and those who are Jewish American, they are all getting a little afraid of their, uh, you know, friends thus far, but suddenly some of them seem to turn against them. And, and what exactly is going on in campuses? See, this is the thing. When politics enters campus, especially world politics, it takes a totally different life of its own. One can say that most revolutions start from the campuses. That's because the young minds are not burdened by the challenges of life. They are there to learn and, and that free will sometimes uh, you know shows up in the form of protest, right or wrong. So if somebody is egging them to do something, the consequences are sometimes unfortunate. So let's take a quick look at what has happened. Recently, two very prominent individuals uh, have expressed their uh, displeasure at what has been happening in Harvard. Harvard's response has been really, really sad because they have not officially, Claudine Gay, who is the president of Harvard, hasn't officially come and condemned what the Hamas did. But to be fair to her, while the protests happened, uh, following day or the day after that, some of uh, one of the uh, uh, other organizations, I don't remember the name, but I have a video on this also. They had a truck that was doing the rounds around the campus and they were mentioning each name of all the members of the student organization, about 34 of them who had signed their letter of support in the cause of Hamas. In fact, they were justifying what the Hamas did to the unfortunate victims of their massacre on October 7th. So Harvard Business School alumni including Senator Mitt Romney and hedge fund manager Seth Klarman accused the school of ignoring Jewish students' safety during pro-Palestinian protests. So the alumni wrote an open letter slamming the school's leadership, Claudine Gay, and its response to pur purported anti-Semitism on campus. This is not leadership. Your silence as the situation intensifies is both astounding and frightening, the letter read. Remember I told you that one, uh, at least one firm has withdrawn letters of acceptance for three students of Harvard University because those happen to be signatories or those belong to those uh, organizations which were signatories. So this letter uh, to Harvard leadership asks four actions, four things to be done. Restate and enforce the school's code of conduct. What can be done, what can not be done. Restrict on-campus protest to only students. This is a valid point. This is a valid point. Because what happens is when, when you allow the rest of the community to come in and just participate in protest, controlling it becomes much, much harder. A campus has 10,000, 5,000, 20,000 students, which is a smaller uh, number as opposed to allowing everybody to come in for protest, in which case it can get out of control very, very quickly quickly. Remember, most campuses have their own police. They don't ask for city police unless it's absolutely essential. And it is kind of difficult to make that judgment when you are just allowing a protest of, say, 10 demonstrators versus 1,000 versus 10,000. You get the idea, right? So this is a very important point. Require that protests be pre-planned and scheduled. Like, for example, if you want a protest march, you start from here, you go there, you have speeches there, and then you disperse. That's game. Create a mandatory course that teaches productive discourse, critical thinking, and the interrogation of facts. This is very, very important. Why are they saying this? Interrogation of facts. See, today, what has happened is, thanks to social media and thanks to the woke culture that prevails in the media, by and large, I mean, 
Twitter has broken uh, out of those shackles, in my opinion. Uh, and there are some who allow everything and anything, 4chan or Telegram. They, they don't stop anything. I mean, but it's not a one to many. In, in, in Telegram, you have to have people come and join you as groups. You get the point. So what has happened is that the facts have become the first casualty. Somebody starts a narrative and then somebody else jumps in. Pretty soon you have an echo chamber where each one's uh, inputs are getting amplified and magnified and then it finds an eruption in one way or the other. Is this what is happening in all these, uh, uh, you know, pro-Hamas protests couched as if it is a free Palestine movement? Because even free Palestine is wrong. You have to go back and understand what free Palestine really meant or means. So this is why they are saying create a mandatory code that teaches productive discourse, critical thinking and the interrogation of facts. And in response to more than 30 student groups blaming the attack on Israel instead of Hamas, which the US and EU consider a terrorist organization, former Former Harvard President Larry Summers, he was also a member of many administrations in a senior capacity, was outraged by Harvard's initial silence. Claudine Gay, the university president, and other school leaders condemned the terrorist atrocities perpetrated by Hamas. At an alumni reunion event, she again condemned anti-Semitism and said she was 100% committed to making sure Jewish life thrives here on our campus. Now, we had one protest first and then another 500 protesters supporting Palestinians walked out of class and marched through the multiple Harvard schools last Thursday. Today is, uh, as we are recording this, this is Tuesday morning. This is according to the newspaper of Harvard, Harvard Crimson. A third protest on campus in support of Palestinians following the start of war in Israel and Gaza is also planned. Not only that, an Israeli student was recently assaulted on the business school campus. So this is where things get tricky. When things were okay, people knew who, where people were from, right? Your or origin. After all, you know, Palestinians are coming from Israel as well as from other Middle Eastern countries. As all as our Jewish students, they could be coming from Israel. They could be coming from any other part of the world. So when when you are in a campus, you are in a campus to learn not try to take the battles from your home and come and fight it here. The problem here is that even if the students do have the maturity, sometimes passions take over and that's where things get out of whack. Now, this open letter that I'm talking about was also signed by Joanna Jacobson, Bill Hellman and Mark Nunelli. Two billionaire donors, Idan Ofer and Leslie Wexner have pulled their support from Harvard. And you also know about the Waldman family who's daughter, uh, Waldman lost his daughter, who was part of that music concert along with her boyfriend. She was just 24 years old. What was her fault? And they've also pulled funding from Harvard University. Even though this talk is about Harvard University, it's not alone. There have been strange incidents happening in other campuses also. We had protest marches in several campuses. Donors at the University of Pennsylvania, of which Wharton is a very famous name, have called for the president to resign. By the way, UPenn is also part of the eight Ivy League schools. And Stanford University suspended a teacher over allegations that students were targeted for their identities amid the Middle East con you know, conflict. Guys, I'm going to make it even simpler. This teacher, whose, so whose name sounds Islamic, to explain his viewpoint, he had segregated all the Jews in the class and asked them to stand on one corner. The problem is the way the example was portrayed might not have been the right optics because something like this happened during the Second World War when Hitler chose to try and exterminate the Jews. Very, very unfortunate. So this is where things went wrong. The, the said uh, faculty member has been since uh, um, suspended pending further actions. We don't know what is going to happen. But my appeal to all parents and the students you are there to study, learn, acquire knowledge. Don't let the world events affect you. You have one job and one job only. It's bad enough that you have the stress of having to compete with some of the smartest brains in the world. And please use your intellectual smarts to think about every each and every issue. Do your research. If you still firmly believe that you want to go out in support of them, by all means, go ahead, but be aware of the consequences. 
That's all I can say. You guys take, you know, a considered decision. You you look at 10 different shoe models before you come up on this one particular thing. You do your diligence. Oh my goodness, I want to buy this particular shoe because of one, two, three, four. You have all the reasons why you are going to make a decision. Why aren't you applying the same kind of logic when you decide to join a student organization as also when that said organization takes a view that perhaps you may not be in agreement with. You have to speak up. Otherwise, you are in trouble because this has taken a whole new life of its own. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.